soft tissue tumors lot of changes are happening the conventional ihc markers are lineage specific for example uh, markers of adipocytes sox10 or s100 markers of smooth muscle sma whereas the new generation markers are molecular event specific there are good number of markers and how will you classify the markers depending upon genetic alteration there are six major genetic alteration gene fusion amplification over expression inactivation single single nucleotide variants and uh, aberrant methylation these are all the six main genetic alterations seen in the soft tissue tumors and we have these are all the number of markers we have for each and these are very very important for uh, targeted therapy okay most of them are having targeted therapy uh, theranostic markers so we play a very vital role in that and uh, when you see specific gene fusion markers these are all the 15 markers for gene fusion and these gene fusion markers are mainly translocation associated sarcomas and the concept you have to remember most of them are having uniform cellularity no pleomorphism no atypical mitosis and this is a nice cartoon i took it from the twitter uh, uh, showing all the members of the translocation associated small round cell sarcomas please take a picture of this and let us see a lot of uh, images now. These are all HNEY small blue cell tumors. This is a soft tissue mass that is positive for BCR and CCNB3. So the diagnosis is BCR CCNB3 sarcoma. Okay. And this is a renal mass. Again, some clear cells are there, but some small blue cells are there that is positive for BCR. And that's a clear cell sarcoma of the kidney. And uh, please remember again, no pleomorphism, no mitosis. And uh, they are all uniformly cellular tumors. And this is a composite picture. Uh, this you may be able to diagnose desmoplastic small round cell tumor that is positive for WT1. This is another small uh, blue cell tumor which is positive for um, uh, PFM2. Uh, which is very specific for alveolar rhabdomyosarcoma. And this is interesting. You see some uh, squamous epithelium, some respiratory type of epithelium, and it is having uh, spindle cells as well as epithelioid cells, biphenotypic. Here you can see these uh, uh, spindle cells, the, and the spindle cells are positive for S100 SMA. And whenever S100 SMA positive with biphenotypic, you please do the specific nuclear marker for PAX3 because in this translocation uh, tumor, which is called biphenotypic sinonasal sarcoma, PAX3 will be positive. This is another composite picture. Uh, you can see the hemangiopitheliomatous pattern, and these cells are positive for STAT6. So, this is uh, solitary fibrous tumor. Here you can see a lot of inflammatory cells. You can see some edematous areas and these uh, cells are positive for ALK and ROS, which is nothing but inflammatory myofibroblastic tumor. Here there is a spindle cell lesion with the pancreatin positive. So this is a NTRAC rearranged spindle cell neoplasm. These are all translocation associated tumors. And the synovial sarcoma, you have to remember, you can see the epithelial cells as well as the spindle doubt cells. This is more monomorphic or monophasic spindle cell synovial sarcoma, whereas here it is biphasic epithelial and uh, spindle cell synovial sarcoma that is having a very specific nuclear marker SSX18 and SSSX. It's very easy to remember. We, you know it is translocation X18, isn't it? So this is a protein synovial sarcoma 18 and synovial sarcoma X. That is the translocation product. That's why it is known as SSX18 and SSX. Remember translocation X18. Uh, this is another nice composite picture. Here are some vacillated cells that are CAMTA1 positive, okay, very specific for epithelioid hemangioendothelioma. And in this tumor, the POXB is positive, which is a pseudomyogenic uh, hemangioendothelioma. TFE3 is nicely positive in the alveolar uh, pattern tumor, so it is a alveolar soft part sarcoma. And DDIT3 is positive nicely here, and it is a mixoid. Uh, liposarcoma okay so here the diagnosis are mainly made with the ihc take the hne to the markers and confirm <coughs> again as i told you
targeted treatments are already available or will be available very shortly. That's why you have to remember these markers. So we have seen all the 15 translocation. Now we are going to amplification markers, which is mainly MDM2 and CDK4, mainly in liposarcoma. But please remember in other tumors also, it is positive, especially low-grade central osteosarcoma and para-osteal osteosarcoma. Uh, this is a very pleomorphic tumor, lot of uh, inflammatory cells, malignant cells. Previously, we used to call this as a malignant uh, fibrous histiocytoma, inflammatory type. But here they are nicely positive for CDK4 and the MDM2. So the diagnosis is D-differentiated liposarcoma. So the overexpression markers, we have five of them. I will show you the pictures. Before that, take a picture of this. Uh, small blue cell tumor, nicely NKX 2.2 positive, so it is a uh, Ewing sarcoma. When it is ETV4 positive, it is CAC rearranged tumor. Uh, NKX 3.1 nuclear positivity is seen in mesenchymal chondrosarcoma. Please, please remember, NKX, remember I told you this prostate also positive. I don't know why prostatic carcinoma antigen or prostatic cell antigen is cross reacting with the chondrosarcoma cell. I don't know that. But please remember uh, NKX 3.1 is positive in mesenchymal chondrosarcoma. MUC4 in uh, sclerosing epithelial fibrosarcoma and DOG1 you all know it is positive in the gist. Coming to the inactivation markers, there are three you have to remember. The SDH1 succin aldehydrogenase B positive in uh, pheochromocytoma and uh, gist. Uh, SMART B1 and A4. B1 is nothing but INI1. Okay, so these are all the markers you have to remember. Uh, take a picture of this. And uh, the deficient markers. Okay, when you go back, these are all inactivation markers, so they will be lost. Okay, so these are also known as deficient markers. And uh, so far, it is only three major headings. See, these are all the things I checked last week, and there may be new members now because science is improving that uh, fast. Previously, like 10 years before, the science knowledge doubling time is one year. But now I think it is like one day. So INI1, smart B1 inactivated tumors. There is a big list of tumors. BAP1 inactivated tumor, you all know mesothelioma. And melanocytic tumors are also BAP1 negative and uh, this is what I was calling BAPOMAS, okay, BAP1 cancer syndrome. When there is a germline mutation in BAP1, they are associated with uh, UVL melanoma, malignant uh, mesothelioma, clear cell renal cell carcinoma in those syndrome, atypical spits, basal cell carcinoma, meningioma and cutaneous melanomas. So this is known as BAPOMA. And uh, fumarate dehydrogenase, uh, FH deficient cancers are all CC, which is uh, associated with or uh, linked with uh, leomyomatosis. Take a picture of this. We will see the pictures. Hand mass mark B1 negative. And whenever inactivation markers, always look for background endothelial cells or inflammatory cells. They will be positive. So they are the built in positive control. So that is last here. It is classic of epithelial sarcoma. Thoracic mass with the loss of SMARC A4, it is a thoracic SMARC A4 deficient and differentiated tumor. For uterine mass, again SMARC A4 negative, it is a SMARC A4 deficient uterine sarcoma. SDHB deficient gastric mass is nothing but epithelioid gist. <clears throat> and one point you have to remember, concept you have to remember, gene inactivation tumors, they show epithelioid or rhabdoid morphology. Coming to single nucleotide variant, there are only two of them, uh, giant cell tumor of the bone with a G34W. And this is very, very important. When they have a treatment with anti-G34W, all the giant cells will disappear. Okay, So it's very, very important to know the uh, history of this specific treatment. For chondroblastoma, it is K36M. See the nice nuclear positivity of uh, G34W in giant cell tumor and uh, K36M in chondroblastoma. The last epigenetic marker is MPNST, which is nothing but H3K27ME3. And here I have to tell you how to remember this H3K27ME3. 
you all remember uh, dr jason hornick he is the best uh, soft tissue pathologist in boston and he g- told us in a meeting please uh, use your cell phone uh, locking as this okay your uh, uh, what do you call password okay h3k27me3 for a week please remember it is for mpnst next week you have the new marker for new tumor but please write down what is the password you are using so for mpnst again that h3k27me3 will be negative and as i told you the endothelial cells and scattered inflammatory cells they are the built in positive control the ewing sarcoma i told you there are uh, four members why we have to know because ewing sarcoma and the sarcoma with the bicar alteration they are having a good prognosis whereas cac rearranged sarcoma and round cell sarcoma non ets they will have bad prognosis that's why we have to know that for ewing sarcoma you do cd99 and nkx 2.2 for cac rearranged tumor you do the wt1 and etv4 for uh, non ets tumor you do the muscle marker will be positive for ews or non ets type okay desmin myogenin and myod1 will be positive whereas sarcoma with the bicar alteration as the name indicates bicar will be altered there okay so this uh, sub classification of ewing sarcoma into four uh, members is very very important and i i want to thank uh, dr karen pinto to allow me to steal this from twitter Kaposi sarcoma, any spindle cells with extra avocated RBC and history of immunodeficiency, think of Kaposi sarcoma and HHV8 will be positive. This is a quick note on extracellular substrate. You can see that uh, eosinophilic acellular material that are positive. This is nothing but uh, amyloid, uh, beta amyloid in Alzheimer's disease. So these are all the extracellular substances or types of amyloid depending upon the uh, antigen. Uh, origin of that amyloid this is a marker for h pylori this is the marker for cmv this is the marker for bk virus this is the marker for adenovirus so any infectious agents uh, good number of them are having ihc there and i want to highlight c4d when we talk about infectious agents because this comes in post transplant setup and uh, this c4d is positive in the glomeruli that's normal but when they are positive like a membrane in the peritubular capillaries that means it is antibody mediated rejection previously we used to call hyperacute rejection now it is known as antibody mediated rejection and this c4d is very very important in the diagnosis of antibody mediated rejection in any organ it may be liver it may be kidney in any organ vascular positivity for c4d in a continuous membranous pattern is a diagnosis of uh, <clears throat> antibody mediated rejection so the prognostic markers so uh, so far we talked about uh, diagnostic markers and uh, overlapping theranostic markers the prognostic markers the well known markers are erpr and her2 new remember her2 new is also used in other organs other than breast for example in stomach it has a very vital role and these are all the experimental markers okay there may be some markers of tumor angiogenesis cell cycle regulation uh, they are all more experimental no independent prognostic value theranostic markers i covered i kindly request all of you to take a picture of this uh, again erpr her2 new is a very well known theranostic markers but we have a very good number of theranostic markers for example we have a anti cd20 that is helpful in b cell lymphomas to treat the patient and this is the list of uh, fda approved uh, targeted therapies and each targeted therapy will have a marker if they are not having already they will be getting it in a, a matter of days okay and as i told you this is the table i checked on 6th of october definitely there will be more drugs there and uh, any talk on immunohistochemistry is incomplete without talking about pd1 and pdl1 and remember i told you you have to remember this whenever there is a rich lymphoid uh, um, cells in any tumor the pd1 is in the lymphocytes and the pdl1 may be in the tumor cells when they don't have pdl1 uh, these lymphoid cells will go and attack the tumor cells and they will destroy but when the pd1 is uh, silenced by pdl1 
this tumor cell uh, won't be destroyed by the T cells. That's the theory behind PD-1 and PDL one When you use the anti-PD-1 or anti-PDL-1 antibody, they will block this uh, interaction and they will allow the T cells to act on the tumor cells. And uh, one drawback of this, these activated T cells will act on throughout the body and that's why they produce autoimmune disease like pattern for example lymphocytic colitis lymphocytic gastritis in patients taking the immunomodulators please remember that because many and many patients are now taking immunomodulators so you get autoimmune diseases throughout our body please ask for the history and pd1 pdl1 should it's a membranous uh, pdl1 is a membranous staining and you have to mention any intensity is positive and please remember in the lung the macrophages will be positive and when you report pdl1 you have to see it is continuous membrane positivity what is the intensity and how much percentage of cells are showing positivity that is also very very important and please i want to thank sanjay mahabatiya for this slide from twitter Advances is a tissue microarray where you can uh, poke the tumor cells and you can produce nice uh, composite block and where you can see lot and lot of sections in one block and you can do experimental uh, antibody testing. So tissue microarray is one of the advances along with uh, IHC for dual markers and this is a picture of uh, kappa and lambda in case of myeloma and this is a picture of AMCOR and P63 in prostatic carcinoma. The take home message is HE is the gold standard. As I told you before, call the clinician before ordering IHC. Uh, caution is very, very important during interpretation because even normal entrapped cells will be positive for the markers. Most markers, they say cell of origin, they are not telling benign or malignant. Always use a panel, never depend on one marker. Select two positive markers and two negative markers. For example, if the DD is adenocarcinoma of the lung or mesothelioma, please uh, use uh, TTF1 and napsin for adenocarcinoma of the lung and WT1 and BAP for mesothelioma. Strict QC is very, very important. Keep updating the knowledge because every day new markers are coming. And uh, if you are getting confused, please uh, get the help from the seniors. And these are all the very vital points you have to remember. And uh, this is a very, very important slide. I just want to tell immunohistochemistry has no brain. Please use yours. So these are my four beautiful references. And uh, Susan Lester, I don't know how many of you are using. The fourth edition is available now. Please uh, get that. And that has a very nice chapter on ISC. And this is the article from Diagnostic in 2021 that talks about all the ISC of soft tissue tumors. Thank you very much. And please remember, we are here to put a dent in the universe. Otherwise, why else even be here? Please remember that. And thanks a lot. And have a wow some time.